Alicia Kosakevich, a beautiful 13-year-old girl with a loving family. She lived in a good, clean neighborhood where she grew up happy. She had no idea that her life was about to change so rapidly and drastically. And I'm going to tell you how everything went from being wonderful and then turned into a tragedy. Now she actually had a good life. I'm talking family traditions and home videos. She experienced a love that was simply beautiful. She was so innocent that at one point she even thought people sung in real life like they do in Disney musicals. Now one day her father purchased a computer, something for the whole fam. She would talk to her friends about school, share secrets, boy crushes and boy bands. It was a great way for her to make new friends because she was so shy but online. She was as bold as Conan. She befriended a 14 year old girl named Christine, someone she could relate to. But unfortunately, she was really John, a 31-year-old grown man. And from there, she met Scott Tyree. At first, he was kind and came off as sweet. Any problem that she had, his words brought relief. He had her back like a trust fall. But talk is cheap, so don't be fooled. Because this is all part of the grooming process. Predators like him go from using friendly words to how about you let me view you topless. From words of comfort to exchanging a few private part pics. See, this is how they brainwash kids and diffuse their conscience. See, Alicia was only talking to someone who was there for her. Who she thought cared for her. Someone that she thought she could trust. And as soon as he knew it, he abused it and used this to convince her to take part in the next phase, which was meeting up. So one night, he pulled up, waiting for 13-year-old Alicia to make her move. Sometime between dinner and dessert, she asked her parents if she could be excused. Now I imagine at this time, she was a little nervous and a little excited as she was about to meet the man who had shown her nothing but kindness. The man she confided in through online conversations that were timeless. So she made her way outside of the house that night. And it was dead silent. The scene looked post-apocalyptic. I mean, you couldn't even see a soul. All you could hear was the sound of the wind blowing and her marching feet in snow. The cold was blistering. The type to eat through your shoes and freeze your toes. And as she timidly hid behind a tree, something rose up in her like pizza dough from her deepest soul. It was her instinct that caused her to then think that this is dangerous. But before she could go, he called her name. And just like that, she was inside his vehicle. He squeezed her cold and fragile hands until she felt like it was about to break told her to shut up and behave or end up in the freshly cleared out trunk space. She instantly became frightened and wanted so badly to escape, but it was too late. As he pulled off, the tears began to roll down her face. And as he drove away, she went from seeing familiar street signs when they rode by them to no longer being able to recognize them. She even tried to memorize them, but the trip was far too long. They even rolled through a toll booth and she was hopeful that the operator would stop and save her, but he had no clue that she was in danger or that something was wrong. After the five hour drive from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to Herndon, Virginia, her nightmare became worse. At his place, he took her down to where the basement was cold. He had a bunch of weird devices hanging on the walls. You could tell he was a sadist at home. He told her that it was okay to cry and that this may be uncomfortable. As he made her take off her clothes, then he had his way with her. I mean, can you imagine the extra weight on her soul? Over and over, he raped her with no conviction. I'm wishing that I could rush him and save her and cave in his skull. I mean, she was only 13 years old. She had hunger pains. He hadn't fed her breakfast, lunch, or dinner yet. She was beaten and tortured, and there was no one to interject. He had her locked in a dog collar, attached to a heavy chain, naked, next to where he would get his rest. This went on for the next four days, and he even broadcasted it on the internet. Some random pedophile that witnessed this on the web recognized Alicia and decided to call the police. I mean, one monster bringing another monster to justice. So much irony, but that's another story, so let's proceed. 
That same day, he alluded to Alicia that he would take her life, and after work, they were going for a ride. At this time, she didn't have a lot of hope, and it was hard to cope that this could be the day that she died. Well, while he was gone, she heard a loud bang, followed by angry men shouting that they were armed. So she decided to hide until they found her, and she saw the most comforting letters in the world to her. F.B.I. She was saved. Now, Alicia's story is horrific, but thank God she was found alive, still filled with breath. Because in a lot of these cases, when children are found, they've already met their death. I'm telling Alicia's story because the reality is your child could actually be next. So make sure you educate your kids on the safety of communicating on the net. Don't be scared. Be aware. Sit down with your children and get them prepared. Watch what your kids are posting on social media and the information that they choose to share. And just in case you're wondering, Alicia's story doesn't end there. I'm, we're just excited to have her home. I mean, there's no doubt about it. After my rescue, I realized that one of the big reasons that this happened to me is because there was no internet safety education being taught in schools. So at the age of 14, I started going to schools and talked to kids and sharing my story. From there, the Alicia Project grew and I started to speak out to parents, to teachers, to law enforcement because talking to kids isn't enough. You have to educate your child and also educate yourself. I feel that it is so important to have monitoring software on the computer and all of your child's mobile devices. And I know that might come back to that privacy issue, but if they're acting strange, if they're staying in their room a lot, if you know just something is off, it's possible that you have a blueprint of what happened and a roadmap to where they are. Because all children everywhere deserve to be protected and deserve to be rescued from abuse.